Transition Tuesday. I'm Jane. This is Joe. We're rolling up our sleeves today in honor of Disability Employment Awareness Month, October. October Occupation. We're going to talk about jobs, all things jobs today. I'm going to give you a couple of statistics to start us off. Um, U.S. Department of Labor 2019 statistics indicate that 8 in 10 people with disabilities in the United States are not in the labor force. COVID. Since COVID. This is from a research organization called Global Disability Inclusion. They're a nonprofit organization that helps people uh, in the business world hire people with disabilities. They said that during COVID, 38% of people with disabilities who had full-time employment were laid off. They also found that two-thirds of employees with disabilities think that they might face some job insecurity in the next 12 months. And most of the people they interviewed thought that they might have to change jobs. So we need to talk about working. Joe, I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. Joe? Um, do you want to have a job when you finish high school? Yes or no? Do you want to have a job when you finish high school? <coughs> what do you think? Do you want to get a job when you're done with high school? Yes? Did you say yes? Or did I just get in the way? You can tell me with your voice if you want. Yes or no? <coughs> yes. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you like having your own money? Yes. Do you think having your own money makes you more independent? Yes. Okay, well those are important things, right? That's what we're talking about. So I'm gonna give you some examples of some things to do to look at employment. Um, you know, Joe may not seem very employable to you, looking at him at face value, but everybody can do something. So these are five steps to um, finding employment for a person with a disability. The first thing to do is job sampling, also known as volunteering. Um, the good thing about volunteering is it's a way of bringing a person into a building, a business, a service, where they, they volunteer, they come, they're a, a, a presence in the building, and then they get to know them. So not only is the person learning about their strengths and their weaknesses and what they like and what they don't like, they are also kind of working as an ambassador in the community, showing that people with disabilities have gifts and abilities to offer. Two, create a resume. So you're thinking, how do we do that? My, my child, I mean, it's hard to do that even with a high school student who has no work experience. Begin with a list of abilities or experiences. <clears throat> Was your child um, involved in a sport at the rec department? 
Maybe they could do something volunteering at the rec department. In 2015, Joe participated in um, a program with the physical therapy department. He helped teach physical therapists how to work with patients merely by allowing them to practice. Um, and we also participated in some peer research studies. So not only did Joe help them learn how to work with people, he also assisted in the big picture of better physical therapy services for people with disabilities. That's pretty good to put on a resume. Number three, go to the top, be persistent. So make sure, it, let's say you go in a local store and ask um, the cashier, um, can I bring my son in here to practice um, straightening shelves? Well, the cashier is not the person to talk to for that. You know, you might know them. If you know them, if you go in that store all the time and you know them, then ask them, who do we need to talk to? Or maybe, could you help us talk to the manager? Or, you know, however it is, each company has a different corporate rule and different corporate structures. How do you get to the person that you need to talk to? And it may take a few tries, but I have a little story. There was a young man that um, was, would go in with his mom into this store nearby. Um, it was a Fred's and unfortunately they're not open anymore, but he used to go in there and just organize the toy section while his mom was shopping. So mom could shop and he did what he liked to do. Good strategy and then she was telling me about this and I suggested why don't you go talk to the manager about allow making this an official every week thing. They did and that young man did, and didn't end up working in that store but he did eventually get a job as a night stocking person, inventory <clears throat> person at a store nearby their home. And <clears throat> so, you know, if it wasn't that he couldn't they couldn't go to the new store and say, hey, he's been doing this at such and such a store. The manager could vouch for his abilities. I mean, it worked out. So he, you know, uh, met the right person. He had a resume. He volunteered. Mm -hmm. See, step one, two, three led to a job. Mm -hmm. Four, follow up and follow up again. And here's another thing I want to mention, daily habits. I think this is good for anybody who's looking for a job. Get up in the morning, get dressed like you have a place to go. You don't have to wear a business suit, but get yourself in the habit of, you know, being a working person. So Joe doesn't stay in his pajamas all day except for Saturday and maybe Sunday morning. Um, he has to get up, even though he's doing distance learning, get dressed like he was going to school. Very important. It's a self-esteem thing. Number five, consider starting your own business. I'm going to tell you a story about a lady I know in, a young lady I know in Franklin County. Um, she was in school loves animals, was big in FFA, her parents, her family has good support. They, um, you know, know people, they're engaged, they're involved. This young lady started a pet sitting business and she is doing fabulous. She needs help with some things, but from what I understand, she's living on her own, learned how to drive a car, she needs help with the budgeting parts, some of the budgeting parts of her business, but she is an entrepreneur at a very young age. Not many people her age can say that. So I'm saying it's possible. That's the thing I want you all to know. So here's a couple of ideas of organizations that you can reach out to. 
Folk Rehab is a good place to start. See, I put my little Google Map Finder thing there. Start with them. And then look around your community or your area for organizations that do disability employment. In Atlanta, the Bobby Dodd Institute is like a powerhouse. In the Athens area, there's ESP, Extra Special People. They took the entrepreneurial thing to the limit. They have a, a Java Joe's coffee business that goes around, and it's an excellent job training and job program. Um, and then there's Disability Link. I think they extend out beyond the uh, state limits of Georgia and assist people with employment, employment skills, and other things like that, as does Voc Rehab, which is a federal program. So go to my blog, which I will list under uh, this and link to on this video. Um, look for us on Facebook. Um, send us a message if there's anything you want to know about that we haven't talked about and Go roll up your sleeves, guys. See you next week.